Hey there YouTube, it's Bobby, aka Pigeonator, and I'm here today with an Alcrate unboxing. We haven't done one of these in a while because their December box still hasn't been sent. They have been posting a lot on their Instagram as far as updates and things, letting us know that they have had some major delays and the December box will eventually be sent, including their reading planner, which I have been trying to patiently wait for. Um, but this should be the January box that I have here. All right, are we ready to see what's inside? As usual, we have the theme card on top, and this theme is Thrill of the Hunt. Looks like these gals are exploring in a cave, perhaps? I do like a bit of spelunking myself, I will say. All right, and first thing I see is a box in the box with a map on it. Ah, oh, oh, this is Middle Earth because I can see Hobbiton right there and the Grey Havens and oh my goodness, yay, what's this going to be? Um, this has a little like description of the item. We'll look at it first and then read that. It's a bowl. Oh my goodness. Take it out of the bubble wrap here. It has Elvish script all around it and these beautiful designs. That's really pretty. Let's see what the box says. Together with artist Janine LaCour, we're bringing a bit of magic to, of Middle Earth to your table. Each bowl in this four-part limited edition collection celebrates a different iconic location from Tolkien's Lord of the Ring universe. This bowl features dwarven architectural aesthetics, runes, and iconography to pay homage to the King of Kingdom of Erebor. Oh, so I was wrong. This is not Elvish. Of course it's not Elvish. I should have known that. I just, that's where my brain went. This is dwarvish runes. Elvish looks so much different and it's more slanted. It, yeah. Where was my brain? On vacation, apparently. It is Saturday as I'm filming this. Oh, look, the bottom of the bowl says Erebor. I'm trying to move all of these into the box that the bowl came in so that they don't get everywhere on the carpet. All right, we have got a velvet baggie and wonder what's going to be inside. Oh, it feels like two different things. Oh, we've got the little thing that tells what it is. Eroian Dinar Coin. I'll create exclusive designed with love by IC Designs. Um, so this is the front side. It says the Golden King. And then here is the other side. Maybe this is the front side. I don't know. Um, May Eroia be with you. Ten Dinar. Okay, so this is interesting. So IC Designs. Hafsa Faisal, the author, like apparently works for or with IC Designs, and this is from her book, We Hunt the Flame. I knew that that sounded familiar. <laughs> ah, shoot. Again, my brain is apparently on vacation. Up next, we've got a little paper envelope, and it says Literary Luggage on it. Limited edition enamel pin collection, design one of 12. Ooh, so I bet this is going to be like every month of this year we're gonna get some literary luggage um let's see oh that's kind of cool looking red linen oh this is V.E. Schwab a darker shade of magic and this says it is designed in collaboration with Hey Atlas Creative oh we have a lovely pin banner we've got a compass on it that's very nice this is also from Hey Atlas Creative so you can put your luggage on the compass pin banner. I get it. I get it. I get it. Oh, we have a pouch. No mourners, no funerals. This is from Six of Crows, of course, uh, by Lee Bardugo. It is part of the Grishaverse world. And if you have not read Six of Crows, you are missing out. It's part of a duology that's also part of the overall Grishaverse experience. I really, really, really like this pouch. Ooh, we have a wood mark here, and it's got some foiling on it. Fancy. Make yourself a myth and live within it so that you belong to no one but yourself. All right, so the contents card told me that this is designed by Wink and Wonder, and it is a quote from the Gilded Wolves. 
featuring Parisian-inspired designs to suit the book setting. Oh yes, we have little fleur de lis here, which is very French. All right, we had to pause for a little camera readjustment and picking up things that I knocked off the table. But we're back on track now, and we're ready to get the book out of the box. Maybe. Here it is, The Ivory Key by Akshaya Roman. I am so, so sorry that I'm terrible at pronouncing names. Let's get this out of the plastic. All right, we have a Dear Reader letter, which has the same cover as the book. And we'll read that first and then take a closer look at the book. Dear Alcrate Reader, I'm so thrilled to be welcoming you to Ashoka, a land filled with ancient artifacts, crumbling forts, and secrets lurking around every corner. I was a teen when the first Twilight books were coming out, so I grew up with the explosion of the YA category. It's no surprise then that when I sat down to write my own book, I went back to all the tropes and elements that I loved about classic YA fantasy. At first glance, The Ivory Key is a traditional YA tale of vanishing magic and the princess who must bring it back, but I put my own spin on it. In this world, magic is a physical resource that anyone can learn to use. Hmm... And in order to get more, four dysfunctional royal siblings must follow clues left behind by a dangerous secret society. I started writing this book in 2016, but I had the idea for it way back in 2010 when I was still a teen myself. Originally, I wanted to write a Robin Hood retelling where the rebels stole magic instead of money. You can still see the vestiges of this initial spark in Rhea and the Ravens. But as my ideas evolved, I began to draw inspiration from other stories I loved. I thought often of the sibling relationships, the originals, and the clever in the originals and the clever puzzles in my favorite childhood treasure hunt movies like Indiana Jones, The Mummy, and National Treasure. I also pulled from my own heritage, filling the book with a lot of my favorite things about India, ancient architecture, regional food, traditional art forms, and extravagant celebrations. But the one thing that never changed was that it would be a story about siblings, though the book has slow burn romances and epic friendships at its core. This was always a love letter to messy, complicated families and what it means to protect the ones you love. I hope you enjoy reading it as much as I loved writing it, and remember you get to make your destiny. Interesting. Okay, so let's take a closer look at the book. No sprayed edges, which is is um, typical for, for Alcrate. That's more of a fairy loot thing. Um, ooh, 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 we do have some gilding on the front cover. And... art on the inside so I wonder since you mentioned sibling relationships if these people are all siblings I guess we'll find out as we read they all look beautiful okay so um, the tagline on the inside of the dust jacket says four siblings and we do have five people here so one of them is not a uh, country in ruins one quest to save them all Vera is desperate to get out of her mother's shadow and establish her legacy as the revered queen of Ashoka. But with the country's only quarry running out of magic, a precious resource that has kept Ashoka safe from conflict, she can barely protect her citizens from the looming threat of war. And if her enemies discover this, they'll stop at nothing to seize the last of the magic. Vera's only hope is to find a mysterious object of legend, the Ivory Key, which is rumored to unlock a new source of magic. But in order to infiltrate enemy territory and retrieve it, she must reunite with her siblings who have been torn apart by the different paths their lives have taken. Each of them has something to gain from finding the Ivory Key, and even more to lose if they fail. Ronak plans to sell it to the highest bidder to escape from his impending political marriage. Caleb, falsely accused of assassinating the former Maharani, needs to clear his name. And Aria, a runaway who cut off family ties, seeks the key to prove her loyalty to the rebels who want to strip the nobility of its power. They must work together to survive the treacherous journey, but with each sibling harboring secrets and their own agendas, the very very thing that has brought them together could tear apart their family and their world for good. Interesting. I very much want to know who this fifth person is inside here. Hmm. This does sound cool, and I love the idea of a Robin Hood situation where they sell magic rather than money. That's so cool. Um, and she did say it would appear with the Rhea um, part of the story, so that's interesting to me. I'll also show you we have a signature page that is beautiful. That's really gorgeous. It says this first edition is printed exclusively for Alcrate. I love that. So pretty. All right, so we have the Alcrate newsletter, and we will do a little cover comparison. So here is the regular cover, and then here is the one that we got. So a difference in background color. 
Um, mostly, yes. I like the dark background. I do. And next month we are going to have Among the Monsters. Every February box will include a set of bookends designed by No One Designs. Nice. I use bookends in my classroom. Not so much here because I have no room to put them on the shelves. Although we, I do have a new thing in my living room that I could set some books with some bookends on. Perhaps. Anyway, um, I'm going to wrap this up because I've got to go to some basketball games today. Frilling. I know. Um, and uh, I'll see you guys next time. So have a wonderful, magical, and bookish day. Happy reading. Adios.